It's the AL Central taking on the East. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Toronto Blue Jays. Where else but 2K Sports? Home field advantage. You want to use that in this game. Toronto will try and do so here. Thank you for joining us. Major League Baseball presented by 2K Sports Thursday afternoon game. Team support. Got to have that. And they've got it here with some 48,000 plus. Brandon Morrow. He's our starting pitcher. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Let's watch Brandon Morrow out on the mound. we got a guy who has overpowering stuff. Power is the name of the game. But strikes have to be the name of the game. It can't all be about power because big league hitters can hit a good fastball, especially when the pitcher's behind on the count. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? If you want to see power in the lineup, just look at Carlos Quentin. This guy can hit it out of the ballpark and hit it out anywhere. It doesn't matter if he's pitched away, he'll take it to right. If he's pitched in, he'll hit it to left field. Great power stroke. But the thing he's been working on this year is his consistency. And for sudden batting, a win in their last contest for the Jays. Now yeah, looking back to games one and two, which they split, they now lead 2-1 here against Chicago. There's a swing, line drive, center field. Well, that's a good start. First batter, first hit. Now we'll take a quick look at the Blue Jays and their defensive alignment. Any scouting pick, Steve? Alexi Aaron Hills is much of a grinder on defense as he is on offense. This guy is always ready to make a play. He never takes a pitch off. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. Morrow gets set and delivers. Now I've got a moment to take a look back to last year's Toronto Blue Jays. Fourth in hits, fourth in home runs. They were in the top ten in team batting average, an offense that made a lot of contact and got a lot of base hits. And Paul Canerco to bat. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. He deals. That's it, foul wow. by Canerco. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. Well, he gets the first out of the inning right there. Now let's see if he can continue to bear down, work his way out of this jam, and keep the score tied. So Carlos Quinton comes up here with two runners on. Well, as it is for many teams, the AL East was a real tough division for the Chicago White Sox in 2009. Couldn't get around in time. 0-1 for the White Sox against the American League East. They ended up going 18 and uh, 21 and didn't play particularly well against uh, really anybody with Tampa. Yeah, and that's surprised because Tampa has such good pitching. You would have thought that the, that Tampa would have an advantage. Hit hard to second. Over to second for one. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play, not quite enough time to get him. Well, he keeps the runners right where they are, so now he's just an out away from working his way out of danger and keeping this game tied. And Beckham's in the box. Let's see if he shows a little more discipline at the plate tonight. Struck out twice in that game yesterday. Just expanded the strike zone. He's got to get more focused. That first pitch was fouled off. It's on one. No balls. One strike. Here's Morrow. Slider down at the shoe tops as he dances away. Well, that's a wake-up call right there. You think, ah, I'm going to go up, have a nice leisurely at bat. Not so fast. Look out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And he'll step on the back. That'll do it. So Brandon Morrow out of the inning. We're going to take a look out at the starting pitcher for the White Sox. Steve, he's got to focus here. Toronto hitters. What's he thinking about? Well, the veteran Freddie Garcia has had to reinvent himself as time has gone on. Injuries have hampered the fastball. He now has to work a sequence of pitches and use his secondary oh. stuff to set up his fastball. That curve is just a little bit outside. One ball, no strikes. Oh. 
Right and a swing and a miss by Wells. Count now is even. Over his career, 3 0 3 off the White Sox. Here's the 1 1. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's 1 and 2 now. Well, if you weren't watching last night, you may not know he had two RBIs in that ballgame. And Vernon Wells right through on that cut, strike three. Not much movement to speak of at just 88 miles per hour. So he takes a cut on this one, trying to yank the chain, comes up empty. Oh, he thought he had that one dialed in, pitched right down the middle of the plate. What shock it was when it hit the catcher's mitt and he didn't make contact. These are the swings that make hitters want to change bats. And we've got Snyder batting. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. The 1-0 now. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. And Rios picks it up. Brought to you by Pepsi. Here's the Blue Jays lineup. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, one of the best young hitters in all of baseball, Adam Lynn, was electrifying in 2009. I tell you what, you watch this kid come up the bat. You watch this swing. It is one of the most perfect swings that supplies power. He can hit it to left field. He can even pull it to right field. He's just so tough to pitch to, and that's what makes him so special. Garcia gets set and delivers. That's swung on and a liner here. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Seven pitches and it's done. That's how you see. It's a nice day here. A little bit on the chilly side, but certainly not enough to detract from the game. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. In the top ten and hits. That's hit foul by Rios. Oh, he's getting the job done this year, no question about it. Such production, so consistent. This is a swing hit in the air. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. He's going to try to stretch it. Stops at second. Two baggers. And a look at next Sunday. It'll be Ian Kensler and the Texas Rangers. They face the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. That will kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern. Looking forward to that one, Gary. That's going to be some kind of ball game to tune into. Chance to drive it a run, A.J. Pierzynski. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Second base occupied. Nobody out yet. Morrow gets set and delivers. Swing, contact. Wells. One away now. Oh, he got a pitch to hit right there, but just a little bit out in front. It's an easy fly ball to center field for the out. Mark Tian looking to knock in a run. Well, the Toronto Blue Jays have had some difficulty maintaining over the course of a season. It's been it's been streaky for them over the last few years. They got it to a great start in 2009, but faded as the season went along. It really was the tail of their season last year. No balls. One strike. Here's Morrow. Straight away left. And that'll put Tian on first. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they ran. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases. And they were in the top 10 in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits. And that's a great stat for a team that swung on line to right center field. It falls in there, and Rios will score. He throws, and run number two scores. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. See how much that triple adds to the win expectancy, our Pepsi WPA graph. Showing some good speed, Steve. He had to in order to get the third. Well, for hitters to get tripled, they have to think three bases out of the batter's box. That's what he did there. Full speed, got the full stride. Great job. The fact that ball was to center made it a little easier, a longer throw. And Posednik's batting. Well, this offense, Steve, it's on the move, and now they're trying to carry this on in the ballgame. Uh, that was a good piece of hitting right there. He got his pitch, took advantage of it, drove it, and picked up the run. Swing liner back up the middle. And that looks like an RBI and a single. So the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Alexi Ramirez.
uh, 0 1 mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate and he pays for it. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. Boy, so many quality at bats in this offense. The pitcher has to make a pitch here and slam this door shut, or this could get away from him. So that puts Paul Canerco at the plate. Well, Paul Canerco just put together another solid season. He's never going to be a guy that hits for a great average, 265, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup. 28 home runs, 88 RBIs in 152 games. Canerco is certainly one of those players you look at as far as your offense is concerned in combined categories of runs and RBIs. He gets on base and he can bring base runners in. Yeah, and that swings and hits this one deep down the line and left. Lind will field as he drops back and puts it away. Springtime around Major League Baseball. Here's a look at the Blue Jays. They wrap up the Chicago series today. Then they'll be going against Torrey Hunter and the Angels. That's a three-game series. Then the next series at home brings in a worthy opponent, the Kansas City Royals. So, a lot of home games to look forward to. And another one. It's contagious. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. You talk about a guy that's been absolutely unstoppable at the plate this series. Nine hits already, and it's not over yet. And Beckham's in the box, and he'll be looking to pad the lead a bit here. When you get these kinds of opportunities, you have to capitalize on it to swing the bat. And the pitcher's really got to bear down now. So a great inning here in the second. Three runs come across, and they've got the lead. The White Sox have the lead, three to nothing. If you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Krupp. It's Aaron Hill to lead it off. This is his sixth season at the Major League level. Now swinging a shot toward second. And so Hill retired. And it's Edwin on Canacion now. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Swing and a line at a right center. And that'll be Toronto's first hit of the game. All the way to the wall. And Canacion headed to third. I need a back. Great finish to that triple right there. He secured it with a play at the end. What an effort on his part. He turns it on going around second base and a great slide stretching it into a triple. And Ruiz settles in. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. Here comes Ancanacion for the plate. And Uncredesi on score. Solid approach at the plate. Did not try to do too much right there. Didn't think he had to swing and hit out of the ballpark. Make contact and get a run in. Well, clearly he would have loved to have found a hole out there, but at least in making this out on the pitch over the heart of the plate, he did something right by advancing the run. Now we'll see if they can take advantage of that and get that run home. And Lyle over Bay up. Swung on, line to right field. And that's a base hit over Bayon. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They wrap up the series with Toronto today. There's another stop on the road trip. The Cleveland Indians will be hosting. That'll be a three-game series. Following that, they'll have to deal with Diana Navarro as the Rays come into town. A team that will definitely give them a competitive series. Rios will field. And that's the third out. That'll do it. So they score once on two hits. Taking a look, Cito Gaston. This two run deficit on his mind, I'm sure, and making plans now to try and get something across the plate for them. And the first pitch. Swung on, liner to right. And that one is in there, his second hit today. 
Yeah, that's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Well, anytime you can get on base with no outs to start an inning, you know that an extra base hit will probably score you. But even if the batter behind you can figure out a way to get on base, now you have the potential for a huge inning. One of the best batting averages up the middle. And Gonzalez dives up with it. And he will take it himself for the out. What an individual effort. You have to love great defense. I mean, that's an unbelievable effort right there and a way to pick your team up in a critical situation. Yeah, and it gets the fans into the game, too. I think fans love D. Two outs and nobody on. Morrow gets set and delivers. Overbay the pick. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Amazingly fast inning. Uh, outs here coming quickly. Three pitchers. And it'll be the Blue Jays coming right up. Bottom part of the order will get their chance. On. And we're going to see Chavez here. He's our first batter, home half of the third inning. Raul Chavez. Taps this one foul to the right. That ball swung on, hit Rios to field it. One down. State Farm takes a look at the lineups with a pop in their back from last season. The Yankees, number one. The Red Sox in second. In third, the Rangers. The Angels, fourth. And for the Blue Jays, they are in fifth. The slugging percentage plays a key part in any team's offense, and this team was one of the best in the league last year at doing that. They seem to hit for extra bases. You know, everyone says, well, they get on second base a lot, they score runs, but also they drive in a ton of runs with all those extra base hits that they get. That's why their slugging percentage is so high and why they're so successful. Oh. And so Wells retires. Javier, this guy makes it look easy and retires another one at first. And we've got Snyder batting. Last year, 267 against the White Sox. Swing and a shot to third. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. And they aren't able to make any noise. It's going to be Nick's now. He tripled home a couple in his last at bat. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs and a major factor in this offense. Now the first pitch. Swing and a ball pop foul down the right field line. He swings and drives this one. And Wells gloves that one. And Posednik's batting. He's the top ten in stolen bases for the league. First pitch. There's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. As he retreats back for it and gets the out. And in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. Lined right at the second baseman. And the side's retired. He'll catch us and he'll head off. So Brandon Morrow's got him one, two, three. Top half of the... And Lynn's batting. Left fielder, number 26, Adam Lynn. Here's the first pitch. There's a swing and a high drive down the left field line. Out of here. Goodbye, home run. It'll be interesting to talk to him after the game and find out whether that was the wrong pitch or the wrong location of that four-seam fastball. Either way, he gave up a home run. Now, momentum is clearly Toronto, shifted right here, Gary. You can feel it in the stadium. They brought it back close, and now they've got a chance to tie and ultimately take the lead. Garcia gets set and delivers. Fastball just misses. 1-0. and 
Great production, Steve. The long ball changes the complexion of a game so often. It sure does. And you know with this kind of power, you can catch up quickly. Ball two. Ooh, that looked pretty good. But he falls behind, 2-0. Here it comes, 2-0. There's a smash towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. Third base. Number seven. And it's Edwin Encarnacion now. What a year for him. Top five in homers. And Encarnacion's first look. First pitch fastball. Misses badly that time. 1-0. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's Getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Hot shot towards the hole, and that puts that potential tying run on base. Well, anytime you have well, two hits in a game, it will build confidence, and he's carrying it over into this game. And Ruiz settles in. One out, runner on at first. Garcia gets set and delivered. Lines this one to the left side out of play. Ground ball headed for the middle. And he'll try to make the play. And there's two, a double play. And to the dugout he goes, Freddy Garcia. He's been hit out of the park once today. Four complete at the Rogers Center. Things will start getting a little more difficult as we look to the third man to lead it up. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. One run lead for his team right now. And Paul Caderco to lead it off. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. And he starts Canerco out. That's it foul by Canerco. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. Morrow gets set. There's a swing. This one blasted high, deep center field. Gone. That's a dinger. They'll take that one run homer. They need that. Now the lead is two. Well, take a look at this pitch. This ball's up and out of the strike zone, and he's still able to drive it. Question is, how far to the strike zone have you got to be to prevent a solo shot like that? That's not fair when you throw it out of the zone and they still hit it. White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. Empty bases, three outs to go here. First pitch to Quinton. Line to deep left field. He has to back up for it. Comes away with the out. Well, they followed the scouting reports. They moved the outfielders back before the play, and they were in exactly the right position to be able to make the catch. Good coaching. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. Slider swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Beckham uh, made his debut in June, and it certainly didn't take long. Swung on, hit, Wells to field, and Beckham set down. Now it's two away. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. He's no stranger to playing in this stadium. Fans are aware of it, that's for sure. Morrow gets set and delivers. Back there in deep left center. And that will retire the side. Not by Lynn. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox by two. Lyle Overbay will lead it off. He's one for one so far. Number 35, Lyle Overbay. And he starts over Bay out. Catcher gets a hold of that one in the dirt. Oh, 
Now the 1 0 pitch. Hit hard on the ground towards third. And that sets down Overbay. Gonzalez at the plate. Nobody on base went away. Now Brzezinski positions himself. And he lays it down. He'll try to beat it out. Garcia. And he throws the first in time out number two. Well, he's clearly bunting for hit all the way here, but not able to get it where he wants to, and they were able to make the play. Here's the first pitch. Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. Well, that's a quality fastball right there, just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. Tried to get him to go after the slider. 1-1. This guy's got a great slider, Gary. When he's got control of it and can locate it where he wants, it's almost unfair to the hitter. That one's lined softly towards the gap left center. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. That will bring Vernon Wells up. Well, with that big two-out hit right there in this inning, you know the managers in there telling him, let's not let him breathe. Let's not let him get that third out. Let's score before this inning's over. Hit hard to second. Beckham throws on to first side is retired. Now we see a good inning from Freddie Garcia. He's leading in what is turning out to be a pretty good pitching matchup. And it'll be the White Sox. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. Great season, top ten in RBI. A.J. Krasinski. And here's the first one. Swung and a fly ball. And a foul ball. Headed for the middle. That brings up Mark Tian. Consistency, professionalism. He never seems to give up in at bat, Gary. He's so locked in this year. Runner on first base, nobody out. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Morrow gets set and delivers. Catcher can't control it. That one swung on its line. And in there, he's two for three today. Now Tremendous situation now running. for the White Sox. Steve looked like that was a strike. Ball was up high, but I think in the zone. Well, up and away, but on an 0-2 count, you're thinking, I need to make contact. Exceptional job of eye-hand coordination. It's going to be Knicks now. Got a couple of RBIs thus far. Now, the couple of RBIs, major factors as to why they have a lead here, Gary. A shot up the middle, and he's got it now. There's one. And two, double play. Well, here's a double play that looks like they ordered up. Great turn, he broke at second base. He was ready to make the play. An example of a nicely executed double play. Tough at bat right here. Scott Pesednik, a good contact hitter with speed. You know he's going to fight. One of the best base dealers in the AL. First pitch, here it comes. Well hit towards the middle. And that ball gets through, and the runner's going to come home. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Well, this is a guy that puts so much pressure on the defense, Gary. I mean, among, among the best base stealers in the game, he can fly. Well, he's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. And that's his third hit of the game so far. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now. Each player feeding off the other. You know, after giving up runs like that, this is where the pitcher has to bow his neck and shut down the opponent. Damage control. This is liner towards the hole. Now Fantastic chance here. 
first a base. perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. Scott Downs is going to be pitching as the Blue Jays bring in their reliever. Well, this wasn't the type of start the pitcher wanted or the manager wanted or his team wanted. Now they've got to see if the bullpen can do a little bit better. And here's Paul Canerco. Top five AL and runs scored. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up four hits in the inning, but manage only one run. White Sox up three. And so Travis well, Snyder leading it off. 0 for right 2 thus far. Number 45, Travis Snyder. Garcia gets set and delivers. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. As he drops back and puts it away. Left fielder, number 26. And Lynn's batting. Well, Adam Lynn is one of the guys that make it exciting to watch baseball. A young hitter who can hit the ball to all field and do it with power. 35 home runs in 2009. Way out there with the curveball, 1-0. For Adam Lynn, probably the power figures were the most surprising in 2009. He really became a, an RBI guy. He really did. And when you watch him swing. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Now Out number two. The Toronto Blue Jays. Second base. Number two. It's Hill at the plate. Aaron Hill. Over three career at bats. Couple of hits off Freddie Garcia. The first pitch. Swings and misses the slider 0 and 1. Well this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean what a devastating pitch and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Swing and a line drive. And that gets down. Hill with a single. That will bring Edwin Encarnacion up. Number seven. He's a big home run guy. Top 10 in the league right now. Gary when you're trailing you don't want to run into outs but they have good speed now at first base. May not be a bad idea to try to steal and get a runner in scoring position. We'll see Canerco holding him in there. Here's Garcia with the one up it. And one swung on and missed by Encarnacion. Strike evens it up. He's getting it done all season long, Gary, and a guy they're really looking to count on. That's taken outside for a ball two, one strike count. Well, coming off of a game where he swung the bat extremely well. A single, double, a triple, just short of the cycle. Only lacking the home run. I'll tell you what, he's locked in right now. And he won't get the call here, so that'll be a free pass. Well, he just keeps missing the strike zone, and patience on the hitter's part earns the base on ball. If you're even thinking about it, do not change your channel. Not for this matchup. We got another shot after hitting into that double play last time up. That one swung on its line. And it's caught by Ramirez. They pick up no runs on a hit, and they leave 2 1. The White Sox still on top. Clean up. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. It's tough for hitters to protect both sides of the plate. You can't protect the outside and the inside, especially when you're throwing your fastball down the way. You got him there. That was a nice strikeout. They made it look easy right there. Slicing and dicing, just attacking the strike zone. Three pitches, all for strikes, sit down. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Pitch on the way. Straight away left. And it's through. That's a base hit. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. And I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate, and he took advantage of it. Here's the pitch. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. Bounces up against the wall. And he's going to try for it. Tagged at home and he is out of there. 
Now up to the plate. Well, a big two-out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. It's going to be Przinsky. Two outs and a runner on second. First pitch on the way. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0-1. Well, they had him set up here going down and in with that fastball, and he hit his spot exactly. That's some kind of pitch. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. Off the wall and left. And Rios comes in. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Number 25, Mark Tian. Well, this is a guy right here that was made to hit fastballs, and that's what he looks for, and that's what he got right there. Put a good swing on it. He knew what to do with it for that double. And here's Mark Tian. And Steve, back up the middle. Oh, and he caught it. What a play. A shot right back at him. What a play by the pitcher right there. He should have seen it. I think he had to have closed his eyes to make that catch. He hits strand a man. For the Toronto Blue Jays, first baseman. Number 35. And he starts Arnold over Bay out. Oh. That one's on the ground, but he gets it in front of him. Oh. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2-0. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. Into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Well, what a great way to get things started. Leading off the inning with the double. Put yourself in scoring position early. Garcia gets set and delivered. Gonzalez lays off for a strike. The pitcher really rearing back and throwing. He's got everything working now, commanding the strike zone with that fastball. Ground ball up the middle, fielded by Ramirez. Too late, and he is safe at second. Throw is there, and he is out. We're going to see Chavez here. Had a base hit his last time up. One out, a runner on at second base. Here's the first pitch. Fastball taken high. 1-0. Oh. Okay, Gary, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitcher's throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels good. Now swing and a shot toward second. Two down. Now up to the plate. Well, he gets the man over to third base, but with two outs now, it doesn't help much, but at least 90 feet closer to scoring. And Wells settles in, first pitch. Line shot into center field. And that one to fall in, and the run will score. Well, you know he's rolling with confidence after that big win they had in their last game. He drove in two runs in that win, and he's getting it going already in this one with another big RBI. Two outs and a man on first. Now Przinsky sets up. Swing, hot shot, Garcia. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So they score once on two hits, one man left. It is get back time for the Blue Jays. Now they've got to shut down the opposition. It's going to be Knicks now. Trying again here, just one for three thus far. Well, he's already driven in a couple runs in this one, Gary. you got to believe they're going to pitch him a little bit more carefully this time around. He delivers to left center, and it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. 
Now well, what a great swing right there. And anytime you can put yourself in scoring position with no outs, you're looking for big things to happen. No outs, runner on second. Now the first pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. Over to Overbay. That's one away. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. So Alexei Ramirez Alexei is batting. Ramirez. One on, one out. A line drive towards the hole, and it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? Batting now, Paul Canerco. A great opportunity for him and the Sox. Swings at that first delivery. Curveball by him on one. Here's the delivery. Now a swing and the ball hit well. Deep to right field. Way back there. Say goodbye. A three-run homer. Steve, he knocks in a three-run homer. They lead by six. Well, that's number two on the day for him, Gary. That means that bat's right on target. Well, he's picking up the ball very well. Now they have not figured out a way how to shut Sox. down this White Sox right offense Fielder. today. They number look so 20, good. Carlos Quentin. Base is empty, one out. First pitch to Quentin. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And that's going to be another hit for them. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence, giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. One down, runner at first. And the first pitch. First pitch, and he misses the fastball, strike one. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And the throw's just in time to get him at second. Great play. Over to first, he is safe. Almost a double play, not quite enough time. And without that great diving play, there would have been no outs on this shot. Well, he sucks it up like a vacuum cleaner, recovers quickly, and then the presence of mind to get the out at second base. Here's the pitch. There's contact. He drove it well. This one's going to be fielded by Wells. That'll do it as they put that one away. So they strike for three more runs here and widen that lead even further. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. And it's Adam Lind now to lead it off. He homered earlier in the ball game. Number 26. Here's the first pitch to Lynn. Strike Called one. strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. And with two strikes on him, Adam Lind will protect the strike zone right here. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was oh, what wow. caused him to swing and miss and be late. Big swing, misses on the changeup, struck him up and away. Look at the big break on that pitch. That's huge. At 82 miles per hour, that's a tough pitch. Just pulled the string on that one, and he was way out in front. John, you hear that uh, that changeup may be the best pitch in baseball right now, used uh, as an out pitch. Well, you have a deceptive change like that one, and you'll need two or more pitches to get by. A lot of pitchers make a living just throwing fastball changeup like that. Hit in the air, in right, foul territory. 
Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. Swing and a miss. He's in the hole. Two strikes. You know, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time in this inning to try to generate some runs. They need to score here in this eighth inning and not leave it all to the ninth. You're Strike out. three call. Home okay. plate umpire racks him up to them. Here's the curve Number seven. on KK. A nice choice on the setup and then the strikeout pitch. That was just plain dirty. Boy, you're giving the off-speed stuff to finish the job. You make a hitter feel bad. A movement like that following another off-speed pitch is so tough to adjust to. The batter had no clue which way the ball was going to break. And that swung on and missed 0-1. Look, uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You're the Swing and lined up the middle. And he gets it down. That's his third hit, three for three. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. It's his third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. Two outs and a man on first. And the first pitch. Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. Plays off the curveball. Good pitch, though. One and one. Here's the delivery. Fouled away. Here's a swing and a line drive. And that's a base hit. Ruiz on board. That'll bring up Lyle Overbay. It's one of the toughest pitches to hit in baseball. It really is the one that separates the good hitters from the mediocre hitters. He stays with the slider and doesn't try to do too much with it. Two down. Runners at first and second. And he starts Overbay out. In there for a strike. He looked like he was ready to swing that time at the plate, Gary, but he must have been looking for a different pitch as that fastball just paints the outside corner. No balls, one strike. Here's Garcia. This is popped down the right field line. Should be room. Good effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. Change up, takes it for a call. Third strike. That's going to end the inning. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The White Sox still on top. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. Catcher number 12, A.J. Krasinski. Here's the pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0-1. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. I don't think he's going to waste any time right now. He's just going to go right at him with that 0-2 pitch. And A.J. Krasinski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. Well, that's what you want is efficiency. You always want to try to retire a hitter on three pitches or less. If he can get it with the strikeout, you'll take that too. And Mark T into bat. Lined out last time up. Swings at that breaking ball, but misses. It's 0-1. Swing and a shot to third. And that'll put Tien on first. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. One out man on first. And here's the first one. A swing line to left center. Makes its way through for a single. Well, with that hit right there, he's got the single covered, a double covered, and the triple covered. Let's see if he can go yard to complete the cycle.
Runners on first and second with one out. It's fouled away. Here's the pitch. Scott Downs dominating the A-B, 0-2. Look for the pitcher to try to expand the strike zone here. The hitter has to swing at anything close. Sinker swung on, miss. That's out number two. You know, what I like about this is on 0-2, he didn't mess around. He didn't try to nibble to get him chase off the plate. He goes right at him and just gets the strikeout. Alexei Ramirez now with a couple on and two away. Career, he's 0 for 1 off Scott Down. Swing and a miss, strike one. He delivers. That one's drilled to short. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. Are you talking about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition? That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. Bases are loaded with two down. And he starts Canerco out. Too low on that one for a ball. 1-0. Oh, it's a great fastball right there down in the strike zone. Now there's so many ways to go. Let's see how he comes back to attack this hitter. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. They pick up three hits in the inning. They leave the sacks full. White side. You take a look at Cito Gaston. Shortstop. Kind of feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe, maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. Gonzalez at the plate. Here's the first pitch. Swung on line to right center field. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. So with nobody out, he's awarded second after that double. Number 13. Well, this is just a good piece of hitting right here. No out starting the inning, and you're on and you're put yourself in scoring position. That's big. Garcia gets set and delivered. And that's in for a strike. Well, a non-save situation right here in the ninth inning. And they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away hope. This is swung on. Lifted to deep right field. And it's going to be Quinton. Gonzalez trying for third. There's the throw. Save at third. Obviously, uh, you know, winning big right now. You just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. And Wells settles in. First pitch. Called strike. Garcia got that one in. It's 0-1. The pitch up the middle. And that will not get that runner in from third. Now down to their final out right here, Gary. So made it looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. And we've got Snyder batting. Grounded out last time. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. Oh Boy, well, he's got great movement on that two-seamer. It's one of the best around. Looks at a ball. 1-1. One one. Here's a fly ball. Could be it. That's the last out. This ball game is now over. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Now we get a recap of one of the outstanding individuals. He's our Pepsi Clutch performer. Well, any starting pitcher will tell you that the last thing he wants to ever have to do is to turn the game over to the bullpen. They like to finish what they start, and that's exactly what he did today. He had all his pitches working, and he had complete command of the strike zone out there. He kept his lineup in check for the entire game and finished it strong. When you take to the road, Steve, any win will do. But when you get this kind of offense, it's very satisfying. Well, it also sends a message to your club and to that club that you showed up to play.
Now that time again. Thanks for being with us today. Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, John Crock, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.